Hi guys, I thought I would show you um, all my milking equipment. So today's video is gonna be on getting ready to milk. So tomorrow will be the first day that I milk the girls. And so today I'm gonna clean all my equipment and I'm gonna get the barn set up and get ready to milk tomorrow. So I'm gonna walk you through everything that I have in my milking kit. Um, I brought it in from the barn to clean it. And then I'll go out to the barn and we'll get the barn ready. We'll check on the girls who are loving their new their new pen in the backyard and probably do some evening chores. and these are the things that stay outside during the winter. And so this is my Dantia Farms Brute Milk Pump and I figured out, we watched the video on how to clean it last night and I'm gonna show you that because now it runs really well. So this is my milk pump. Um, and I just have a, a little wet microfiber cloth that I'm gonna use to kind of wipe everything down since it's all dusty for me and in the barn all winter. I love these little Dantia Farms pumps. I've talked about them before. I would, if you're just starting out, I would definitely order one of these. Now that we've kind of figured out how to keep them running, um, they're even better. So this is the Brute pump. It comes with an AC adapter. Um, so there's this. There's the plug that goes with it, and it's got it. Um, all this off so it plugs in and I've showed you guys this before but I'll show you again my whole setup so I have the pump I really like this if you're new to milking I recommend starting with the pump because um, you're gonna have to it take time to build your hand strength up and these are low impact pumps and they're really easy on the girls and it's really hard to do it wrong um, so yeah it plugs in and I have a uh, pedal outside and I turn it on and off with my foot and then this is the lid attachment and this is what we really have to wash the lines actually look really clean except for this one pink spot so that's good um, and the top is rusted um, so this is the lid attachment it goes on a uh, mason jar and so I'll go get a mason jar and show you that and these are the tea cups we're gonna wash this in the sink and this is how it attaches to the pump um, so it's just a little quick connect oh gosh and it just snaps in like that so and then unsnaps it's a quick connect this is actually if you're looking for these we've bought these um, some replacement ones because I tend to replace the hose Gets, the hose gets really nasty. I just cut it off the barbs and we replace it. It's just aquarium tubing. And these are like, come on, camelbacks. Um, they are really hard to find, but you can get them on Amazon. You just order them in a, in a little package. But they're quick fill. I think they're called quick fill connectors. And these are just. Um, really just syringes and I've replaced those before as well. But these are in pretty good shape. I didn't milk for very long or very much last year. And then there's also these that will wash. Um, these are tea plugs. So if you have a dough, if you only want to milk on one side, you can plug up the tea plugs. So they go in like this, like you would the back of a needle exact same plunger kind of thing okay okay so other things in my kit um, that stay inside are a dry erase marker mason jars this is a quart um, this is one quart so two pints um, mason jar one goat maybe two goats in this depending on where you are in your lactation cycle but for me 
right now we're gonna use the half gallon jar to milk three goats. So this should, they probably won't give me a half gallon, but it'll be close. And so the way that the lid assembly works um, is you just put it on top of the jar and screw it on. And I probably need to order a new one of these this year because this one's getting, the, just the lid is getting pretty rough um, in general. And I do change the band out quite often. But for me, we'll clean this off. I use the plastic lids for my mason jars instead of the um, metal lids for um, storage. And then I write the date and dry erase marker on top. So the milk that we're gonna milk, sadly for the next week, is gonna have warmer in it. So we're not gonna be able to use it. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna clean all of this stuff really quick. Okay, I think you can see I'm fighting my cabinet. Okay, so I'm gonna fill this bowl up with hot, um, soapy water. And I'm probably gonna put a little bit of bleach in it if I have some in the house. So we're gonna put like a little splash of bleach, just a splash um, in here as well. Okay, so we have our water. And I'm gonna try to flip flop this so that you can see better. I'm gonna hook the lid up to this small jar. We don't really need a big one for this. Got your little assembly hooked up. I've got my um, pump plugged in over here. So I'm gonna hook, so we'll move it right here so you can see. So I'm gonna hook it into pump. And then I'm gonna take the teacups and put them in the water. And we're gonna run the pump. And I'm gonna flush the lines um, once, probably twice through. So it's filling up the jar right now. Let's see? And we're gonna make sure that it doesn't get too full. We're just gonna dump the water out. And what I do in the barn is I keep the small jar, a small jar out there, and I run soapy water through the lines at least. I try to do it every other day, and then bleach water probably every other week. Milk has a lot of bacteria in it, so it molds really quickly. Um, okay. So we've done that through twice, and that just kind of gave it a little bit I'm gonna put a little bit more bleach in this water because it's almost gone. It's mostly just bubbles. And then we're gonna soak, okay? Which is gonna be fine because I still have to cook dinner, so this is gonna be, I should have done this out in the barn. Probably, but. Okay, so we're gonna fill it up, let the lines get full of water. I'm just running it completely through. And I'm gonna fill it as much up to the top as I can. I don't want it to back up into the pump, but I really want, and see that didn't work the way that I wanted it. It's hard to tell, but there's air in the line right here and there is um, a moldy spot, so got to figure out a way to keep the water in the line. Okay, so what I figured out is I have to fill the jar up to the very top. And so now I have water stuck in my lines. And I'm trying to kind of see, I should be able to scoop up a little bit more water and just hang these up. So we've got this one filled. 
And I just want them to soak for like an hour or two, not for like forever. So I'll probably let these soak until I need the sink for dinner. Um, so yeah. Okay, so at the same time, I wanted to show you a little trick for the pump. Um, and so all this is, is you put a little bit of water in a cup or in a bowl. This is a nasty Tupperware, that's why we used it. And you run the pump, and you soak up water. Until it blows out the other side like that. Um, and that just stopped it. And that really improves the suction a lot. It just kind of cleans the dust and dirt out. So this pump, problem was not actually the suction, it's that the um, rubber toothing needs to be replaced. So that's why I'm using it, but it runs really well. So pump is ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and take, I'm, not, I'm gonna leave it out, leave it in here. I think the girls are really enjoying this pen a lot. Uh, it's so nice to be able to finally do some pasture rotation. With them, it's a lot more work for sure. And normally I don't have the time, but let's see. Do you guys need some water? No. Here they are. Um, and they've made a little bit of a dent in the grass. You can definitely tell they've mowed down all in there that weed for sure hi you guys actually look full though which is nice where's Nani oh did we have an escapee I'm missing a goat I don't know how she have gotten out mm -hmm. where's Nani bear Pepper's still in here. Okay. Oh, nope. She's asleep over here. Hi, Bix. Hi, best friend. That's so good. She's over here. So you can tell that they've eaten this down for sure. It was really tall. Which is great. A couple more days. And then we'll move you again. Hey, Daisy. What's wrong, Duke? I did get Cece's udder shave this morning, which was really nice. Oh, Twiz. What do you think, Tulip? Do you like the new pin? Say hi, Clover. No, Clover girl. Link had runny poop yesterday and I wormed him. No runny poop today. This should just be good for everybody. Okay. Let's go see what we need to do in the barn and see what kind of stuff we have. I want to say I have one more set of aquarium tubing. I just really hate to go out right now. And get some. It's not the end of the world, but um, we don't need feed or anything. And I would prefer to do um, limit. Okay, so perfect. We have a set of aquarium tubing, so we don't have to go out. We'll just change out the tubing. So that'll be perfect. I'll show you how to do that. I think that's probably a better option. Okay, so things we need to do. The stand is set up and ready to go because it never moves. We have our cookies. We have, I've shown you guys this before. It's our freezer. Our lunch bags to put our milk in are frozen and ready to go. There's even actually some feed in here. But what we need to do is fill this bucket out with feed. I've got baby wipes. Ready to go for cleaning udders. I'm glad that I have a pretty big stock of those. Um, 
And if you've watched my videos from the fall, we use cookies to get the girls out. So they know to come in that there's food, but when you're trying to get them off the stand, out the door, back into the pen, you gotta have a reason they wanna go. And cookies are way more motivating than anything I can put in this bucket. Um, yeah, so I have my strip cup. Ready to go. And that is about it. Um, the other thing I have that I'm gonna get set up really quick, sorry, is this. So this is my pedal and my extension cord. And we've been using this extension cord all winter for shop projects. So I'm gonna have to kind of pick it up and wind it up. It was taped to the floor in a circle over here, but we had to use it. So I'm gonna get the pedal back underneath and that squared away real quick. Okay, so I got my feed done and my um, extension cord rolled up. So this is my feed bucket. It's a little bit more than a five gallon bucket. Um, and I just zip tied, not that you really need to see this, I just zip tied my extension cord together. This is 50-50 alfalfa pellets and sweet feed. I have girls that will absolutely refuse to eat anything and to stay on the stand and be milked if the only thing I give them is pellets. So I mix it 50-50. I always recommend that you have a lid on your feed. And I just use one of these little milk scoops as a scoop. So yeah, so we're set up and ready to go other than the pump. So I'm gonna go take this in and get it done. And then we'll bring the pump out and get it set up. Jeremy had it like really good when he was like zip tied to the leg of the milk stand. And I'm a little sunburned from yesterday. But I'm not that fancy, so I probably will just put it, but that's hooked up and ready to go. We'll change these out and really we'll be ready, which is really exciting. So it's kind of depressing that I had to worm everybody today so that milk will not be fit for human consumption for a few days, but, um, and to be honest, there's no really good withdrawal studies on wormer for goats. For cows it's five so it's anywhere between five days and two weeks uh, I usually probably go about a week week and a half depending on if I'm just kind of what's going on how many goats I've got that I've wormed but it's what's right for them it's gonna keep them healthy we're gonna keep them off that infected pasture so that's right thing I'm gonna go check on this plant and I'll show you the seeds inside too that we've started. So my onions. As you can see there, a couple of them got dug up probably by the cats. But we have some garlic sprouting. Really excited. Got three sprouts. Four. Here's one. Nothing on this end of the box yet. They're not very good garlic sprouts. So if we only get a few, that's fine. These are all onions, look to be doing pretty good. Everything that's managed to stay in the soil looks pretty good. It'll be a while before we see anything out of our potatoes. And carrots, oh gosh. The giraffe is gonna break my fence. I don't know what these guys are hauling about. Daisy, get down. Come this way. Come on, get off the fence. Good girl. Probably need one more to go over there. These guys are having so much fun. So much fun. Oh, Zelly, are you sniffing me?
They're just having a blast. I'm just really excited that this worked. And so my hope is that we can get that fence worked on this weekend, at least part of it, that we can come this way, give me a little bit of space, cushion between the garden, but get them eating this. Honestly, maybe even this direction, because there's a lot to eat out here. And that's the point. There's no reason for them to be sticking their heads through. There's plenty to eat. But, whatever. The big goats aren't used to being able to stick their heads through the fence. But, what do you know? I swear this is their favorite thing. Is jumping on mom. Those two anyway. It's so funny how big Cece's babies are. So you look at Pine, which is a little black one, and this is Pepper. Pepper is a week older than Pine, and Pine is bigger than he is. And he's about bigger than Tulip. Cedar's still a little smaller. But Pine was just massive. I wonder if she looked like she was pregnant with like eight babies. Because he was like a toddler. All right, let's go get that aquarium tubing done. Okay, so a couple of years ago, we tried to make our own lids and we did a stamp and we bought these like sealable. It just, it doesn't seal as well as this lid so i've stuck with this lid um so what i'm going to do for these is just cut them away not the one this is the pump so i'm not going to replace the one that goes into the pump so i'm not going to replace this one because no milk ever goes through it so there's no reason so i'm just going to cut these off right in front of the barbs We'll take this back outside. And then I'm gonna do the same with these. I'm just gonna try to make sure I'm cutting the right two. So we don't wanna cut that one because it doesn't really matter if it's gross or not. So we're just gonna cut that off. I think I have some of these, but I'm gonna show you um, Okay, so they're not gonna pull out. We'll have to cut them out as well. Let's see, come this way, because I feel like I'm very much. Okay. So these are my new ones. I'm gonna cut this one off, not that one. This one. And I'm gonna try to do this as an X-Acto knife, but I bet I'm gonna have to have my pocket knife. We're just gonna so this is just a multi-tool and I'm just going to take a pocket knife and just really carefully kind of cut at this. Until it splits and I can cut it away from the barb. So you can't pull it off. Since it's on there, there's no way to get it off. You have to cut it away and just be careful that you don't cut yourself. So, just, you can see that I just kind of peeled it apart. Um, just using a pocket knife. This is just, like I said, a multi-tool. So, pocket knife. I'm gonna try not to damage the bar, the barb, so I'm not dragging my knife. So, we have that off. And I don't know that I'll be strong enough, to be honest with you, to pull, to push the barbs all the way up, to push the hose all the way onto the barb so it seals. So I may have to have Jeremy do that. Let's 
start it a little bit. Again, just really trying hard not to cut myself or damage the barb any. There we go. So those are off. So we are gonna clean these really quick with some bleach water. Okay, so these absolutely get discolored over time, but I've disinfected them with bleach and soapy water, so they should be good to go. And so we're gonna take our new plastic tubing and just kind of press them into the barbs. And like I said, I'm gonna do my best with this, but I bet that I will have to have Jeremy push them. Oh, no, got that one. So that's good. And they're still a little wet, so it's probably helping me. A little. And we will flush these as well. So those are nice and tight on there. There, I've pushed them, if you can see, all the way to the plastic cap. So now I just need our tea cups. And normally, like normally they just pop out. Um, these have been cleaned. So we're just gonna stick them in our and look at this. So there you go. And I'll have Jeremy push them in a little bit more because this I can't bear down on as much. There's not like anything to give me some resistance. So I'll have him kind of twist on them a little bit, but for the most part, that's good. Oh, I seriously just put this one on the end of this one. That was amazing. So both of those, that's the nasty old tube. So silly. I'll have him work on that a little bit. Just. I don't know, you guys may have like super awesome arm strength. I do not. Okay. So, teacups is back. So it's great, we have clean tubing and so what I'm gonna do is rinse this through. Um, the pump one more time because it's brand new plastic. Just get it nice and clean with some bleach and soap water and I'm gonna hang them to dry. And then we'll take it all back out to the barn. Okay, so we're all packed up, ready to go. We've got our pump and our power connector and our jar with a lid and our um, attachment and I'm gonna throw this in and put it back outside just in case we need it. I'm sorry the dog is barking that maybe you can hear. Uh, so just wanted to show you what else I did. So I have plugged the pump in to this pedal. So the pedal, you turn this into the on position and into the pedal which is great. This is hands-free. Um, pump end is here, my jar is here, the extra pumps here, teacups, everything's cleaned and I cleaned out the inside of that. And I hung up the lid assembly for now because it's still wet and so I just used our exercise equipment to hang it so that it will kind of drip and dry out. So we are ready to go. Whether we milk or not, tomorrow everything is set up and ready to go. Okay guys, that's the end of today's video. I hope it was helpful to see all the different things that are in my milk bag and the things that I use for milking. If you're a first time milker, I really recommend having some sort of pump. It really takes a while for you to build your hand strength 
up um, to be good at milking, to get enough milk out of the dough for it to be good. Bigger doughs, um, especially if you're gonna like milk a Nubian, it takes a while um, to do that because they have a lot of milk. And if you're first time stand training a goat to milk, also really helpful because it just goes a little bit faster in general for them and for you when you get kicked less and all of that, which is nice. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. We use the Dancha Farms pump. I'll try to link everything that we use down in the description um, below so that you can find that pretty easily. We've been really pleased with Dancha and all of their equipment and um, customer service. They're super friendly and wonderful. So if you have any questions for me about the milk equipment or anything that we did today, please reach out in the comments. I'd be happy to answer your questions. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like this video and leave me a comment about what other things that you want to know. What other questions can I answer for you? Um, if I have a milking video and I'll try to link that above for you guys, like a how to, how to milk a goat video. And, um, but yeah, leave me a comment about anything else that you want to know about milking that we do here on the farm. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video and make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the little notification bell and thanks for watching.